What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Trank and today I'm going to be talking about the shop mallet that I made. Uh, so here on the screen you can see I made a first prototype version but there were a couple mistakes and I was just doing it to kind of get the technique down. So um, I did like the size of that first mallet so I ended up just replicating the rough dimensions of that mallet. So starting off here I cut a couple pieces of crotch walnut. Those are going to be the sides of the mallet and I'm actually going to be using a technique I originally saw it on Steve Ramsey's YouTube channel, but um, he got it, I believe, out of a fine woodworking magazine from the late 90s, and it's a really great design to do a simple mallet and make it, you know, give it some weight, and it, it goes together really nicely. So here I'm just planing down some of the stock, getting a flat face and a flat edge. And because the crotch walnut is, has so much uh, kind of like curl and figure to it, it's pretty tough to plane with my jack plane. And so I do just bring this over to the jointer to uh, get a face flat. And once I have a face flat on each, I just go ahead and run it along to get a, a square edge. And finally with my uh, edge and face square, I just bring it over to the planer and bring my pieces down to thickness. And then finally I just square up the very last edge on each piece, just running it through the table saw. So here I'm cleaning up an end on each of the crotch walnut pieces. Uh, I then use a stop block just to cut them both to the exact same size. And now the two pieces that go in between the crotch walnut edges are uh, these pieces of, I, it's not poplar, but I forget what it is. And what I'm doing here is just putting a one degree taper on it. And this is gonna allow us to do a wedge through mortise and tenon for the handle. And so I found that the first time I did this, I did a two degree angle and I found that the entrance uh, exit gap was too wide compared to the inlet gap that you really couldn't wedge it and get the gap completely filled. So here I did a one degree angle and that's what I would suggest doing. So there I just glued up the pieces. It doesn't, they don't have to be perfect uh, at this point because you'll be, you know, getting this all flushed up after the fact, which is what I'm doing here with the jack plane. And I don't even get them dead flat and square because I ended up doing the majority of the work over at the table saw, but I did have to at least flush them up to get a some sort of reference surface for the table saw. But uh, once you have that, I just bring it to the table saw and get this thing completely dimensioned. And now here I am actually ripping the stock from the handle, both to thickness and to width. And so here I'm establishing the thickness. You need this thickness to be uh, just less than the gap in your mallet head. And I, I leave it a little bit proud so that I can plane it to be exact. And so here you can see that it's just a hair too thick uh, on both the width and the thickness. And so I just progressively take off, you know, a couple thousandths of an inch of it at a time with the plane until I get a perfect friction fit. Uh, even really less than a friction fit, more of like a tight, you need to hammer it in kind of fit. So I would just suggest taking your time with this step because it's really easy to blow past it and get a crack that's gonna, or a gap that's gonna show, uh, and that really takes away from the look. And so I really would just suggest taking off, you know, one feather at a time and then checking the fit, uh, which is what I'm doing here. And you can see right here I get it so it just just starts to push in with a bit of force and that's right where I like it for making these mallets. So there's a lot of different methods you can do for shaping the uh, and putting shape on the mallet head. Uh, I find an easy and quick way to do this is just adding some chamfers, some pretty large chamfers with the table saw. I uh, use a bit of painters tape on the edges to help minimize the tear out and you still get a little bit but because I and here rounding over those edges, it, it ends up, you don't see any of it. And I just recently got this 
palm router and it really makes operations like this a lot easier than using my my two-handed full-size Bosch and so I've been really enjoying it uh, but here you can see the round over gives a really nice profile to the mallet head and so now I'm showing my uh, sort of unique method not very unique but kind of odd method for making wedges most people would use just a bandsaw, which I don't have, or maybe a, a disc ender, which I also don't have. So what I do is I put on the, uh, I actually do a two degree taper on the wedges themselves, and, as opposed to the one degree, which was on the internals of the mallet. Uh, but I put the taper on and then I bring it to my cross cut sled and I just um, create the other line square and that gives me those wedges. And so finally, I'm just doing a bit of cleanup work on the mallet. It's, it's good to clean up the mallet and the handle separately because once it's all together, it's a little hard to get at each of the faces with the sander. And then here, I'm just using, again, the router to put a quarter inch round over on the handle. And you just want to make sure you don't go all the way. You want to make sure you stop just before where the handle is going to be entering the mallet. And then finally, to get those wedges in, I'm making some cuts with my handsaw and I run those a couple a couple inches deep and then just to help minimize any sort of uh, problems I put some relief holes at the bottom of each of those cuts and I just use a, I think an eighth inch drill bit for this just put a hole at each of the bottom and finally you can go to the assembly of the handle with the mallet so you don't really need much glue for this because again it's it's a really tight fit and you're going to be putting those wedges in so i just put a little bit on the inside and then i, I hammer the handle into place and then you'll see here and this sometimes happens is those those gaps that you cut for the wedges sometimes close up or get a little tight when you're hammering that handle on so i just open it up with a pocket knife uh, and then you can put those wedges in and just hammer them home and you want to just check to make sure there's no gaps anywhere in that through uh, tenon because you want it to be completely filled and you don't need any sort of clamps or anything you can just wait for that to dry and once that dries I just uh, flush up those wedges with a flushed cut saw and then I do the actual flushing up of the top with, with again with the jack plane and once you do this you get a really really aesthetically cool looking top with that with those wedges as a nice bit of color and uh, as long as everything goes smoothly you should get no gaps like I did here if you stick to that one degree taper you should be uh, good to go and now that the handle is connected to the mallet I just like to go over with some block lanes and get everything ready to start applying the finish And to get those rounded edges, I like to put them in the vise and then just take a strip of sandpaper and just kind of curl them along to follow the, so that you don't alter the actual uh, round over that you put on there. And then I just manually add a bit of a round over to the bottom of the handle here. And I've, I've, you can do chamfers here too, but since I went with round overs for the rest of this mallet, I decided to just stick with that. Now I decided to actually add some leather onto the ends of this mallet and that'll help both protect the wood and, and protect whatever you're going to be using the mallet on since it's, you know, you're not going to be using this on rough objects or hard metals most likely that you would just use a regular hammer. So what I do here is just put some blue, planer, blue painter's tape on to protect where I'm going to be attaching the leather and then I go ahead and apply finish to the mallet. And I'm just using a wipe on polyurethane for this. I really I like it much better than uh, using a brush to put it on. So now that the finish is on, I can use the end of the mallet to uh, attach a bit of leather. And this is just standard veggie tan uh, leather. And you can use the round over in the edge of the mallet to just cut that to the exact profile. And you can see that gives it a really nice and really nice matched look. Uh, then you want to just, I burnish the edge of the leather to give it a little more of a finished look. So I just apply a little bit of water and use the side of a smooth object. Here I'm using a, a Bic lighter just to um, burnish those edges. So 
So with the edges burnished, I go ahead and apply some contact cement. And you put this both on the, the bottom of the leather as well as on the mallet. And it works pretty easy. Just You let the contact cement actually dry. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, and once it's dry, you can just come back and manually push them together. And they should, you know, they seal within about a second or two. So you want to be make sure you get the placement exact. And then I just push it down to make sure it's all making contact with all the leather. And you can see that it's it's on there and it's it's not going anywhere. And finally, I just put uh, put my marker on the base of the mallet, and this is finished. So, if you guys enjoyed this project, be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe. Let me know what you guys like as far as videos, if you like the voiceover with a bit of explanation as to what I'm doing, or if you just prefer the more kind of silent videos with just the tools. Uh, I don't mind making either. Um, so check out my other videos, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.